Well, we do thank you for your grace and your mercy and your word, and um, we thank you for people coming out to listen to your word. And um, we want you, by the power of your spirit, to unpack this for us and to um, give us um, freedom of heart and freedom of mind and give us eyes to see this world for what it really is yes. and give us the ability to um, see through the um, veneer that's put before us and, um, and see that you are glorified and you are in control and you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Bless this to us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're studying First Peter. And we've been through chapter 1 and 2. And chapter 1 really lifts up the whole idea that, um, you know, we are absolutely set apart. Strangers in a strange land. Uh, we're um, we, The word aliens has got a funny kind of connotation now, but it only means that we don't kind of belong here. Um, we belong in as citizens of heaven. And uh, uh, Peter is trying to underline that, and he's telling us in the first chapter... Praise be to the Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his grace and mercy, he's given us new birth. And he talks about all the brilliant things. Uh, we're shielded by God's power. So right now, some people need to know we're shielded by God's power from chapter 1. Um, until the coming of the salvation. And then, but in this we all greatly rejoice. But we're going to have to have grief and trials. And when we get to chapter 2, it unpacks that a little bit more. Tells us again that we're living stones, chosen people royal holy belonging and then um goes on to say uh, we've got a you know there's you're living in this world you're not of it but you're in it so there's like rules and authorities and we've got to um put up with the fact that that might get a little bit fraught um and then towards the end and this is where i wanted to get to chapter 2 verse 21 just to start this off to this you were called he's talking about the suffering you know you were called because christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps, his steps of suffering. 22, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. And that's where we left it last time. He's the shepherd and overseer of your soul. And that's not just when you're not feeling like it. That's not just when everything's going south and the day looks gloomy and you've got a shift load of whatever in front of you. And um, shift. And um, (laughs) the thing is, is, you know, you're at work. I'm trying to cl- over clarify this now and dig the hole even deeper. But um, <laughs> but what we <laughs> what we've got is um, life's difficult and there's stuff that goes down and then it can get really really uh, tough. But we've got to get this. It, I'll keep saying it and I'll keep saying it until we get it. He's the shepherd. You're a sheep, an overseer of your soul. So what I want to do is just take a moment, right, just to get back into this this space now. That you don't think about anybody else for now. You have a shepherd and overseer of your very soul who's so powerful that he can can do this to every believer but you, he does this to you and he cares about every single aspect of your life everything, okay and in his great mercy he'll withhold the things that we think we need and he'll give in good time the things that we actually do need at the time when we really need them in his will and purpose now, this is all because we've submitted ourselves to him and we're trying to say wait the whole point of christianity is that your will not mine so it stands to reason good reason that um just a minute minor chaos as someone else comes in room. that's the guard dogs outside the prison you can hear that it's like yeah. it's like So he's the shepherd. Hello. Hi. He's the shepherd and overseer of our souls, and he's the one who uh, we've got to rely on, and we've got to get used to that. Half the problem is we don't think he's the shepherd and overseer of our souls, and especially when the enemy comes along, or circumstance comes along, or circumstance and the enemy comes along, and makes it very bleak in our outlook. And we can get up some days and think, well, I, don't, I can't even sense God in my life. But the fact that you, your feelings and senses are nothing to do with it, it's about faith. Now, we were asked this question a couple of weeks ago, and in church over the last few weeks as well, because we haven't missed that. 
But um, one of the things that we've all got to do is drill down faith into our lives. Right? And this is a statement, a faith statement. He is the shepherd and overseer of your soul. If you can't, want, or refuse to believe that, you're in trouble. Mm. Right? Because you're going to be exposed and you're going to be vulnerable. And the rug's going to get pulled up un- from under your feet all the time. Because um, that is something that we've got to believe. Now, we've got a combination punch in this church. And it's not definitive or by any stretch of the imagination the last word in it. But if you can master Psalm 139, write that down, mm. and Ephesians 1, it's a combination punch to the devil. Psalm 139 tells you that Jesus, God, is not only overseeing you and your shepherd, but he's there in every heartbeat that you've got. He was there with you as a fetus. He was there with you in your life. And you might have become a Christian late in life, whatever, but he's there. And now he's in the very DNA of your frame. You know that word, I know your frame, it says that in Isaiah. But um, your frame is known by God, but your frame isn't your stature, just your stature. It's the, it's the every single potential of your entire holistic being God is involved in. Now, you can afford to have a warm, fuzzy feeling about that tonight, okay? Because if God Almighty, who can make nebula and galaxies and all the universe and everything, like, all the way down to the microcosm, the, the wonders of the world, all that kind of thing, the complexities that we see around us, he is the one who oversees your soul personally on a personal basis. Now, it's going to matter this. Because right, we're going into chapter 3 tonight, we're going to do chapter 3, which is a lot of doctrine, okay? What instructional, what we do, but we've got to sort some stuff out. And some of that stuff is, is that what is, what's, what's faith, and how, what's the relationship with knowledge, and what's the relationship with um, how we live our lives. So we live our lives out, things happen to us, we have our experiences, and sometimes we can despair because I'm grasping for something or someone that's not there. He is. But what's the shortfall between our perceiving that God's not there to rely on and the fact that the scriptures tell us that he is there to rely on? Am I the only one who's had an experience where you think, where, 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 you, where have you gone? Disappearing act. Mm-hmm. Are you a magician? You've vanished. You know? So, and it's usually in proportion to the fact that on one side, all our troubles and worries and concerns start going up there and our faith in God, he starts to go away. You know, so I'm raising my right hand and lowering my left hand because all our concerns and all the things that we project into the future, all the things that we can see now that aren't always firing on all cylinders, all the things that look like, oh gosh, what about that in the future? What about that now? You know, all these things. And then suddenly we look around and we go, he's gone. What's that? I had a faith yesterday. I was praying in, in, in tears because of the, you know, the, the, the Lord's presence in my life and just thankful. And he's gone now. So what's the thing? And and it's because... Can anyone tell me what's not firing that we get like... God does his disappearing act when it fully says here that he hasn't done a disappearing act. He's the overseer of your very soul faith. and your shepherd. Is it faith or something? Yeah, it's faith. Do, can we unpack that a little bit more? Like we're not what? listening to him. We're not close to him. We're not we're in not that relationship. We've got confidence in him. All of that. Yeah. All of it. So what is it, before we move on with this, what is it where we go, I'm a, I'm a believer, I believe that this is God's word, and I see something that says, he's the shepherd and overseer of your soul, and if I stub my toe, and I'm not I'm being facetious slightly, but if something goes wrong, and I experience a small amount of discomfort, pain or uncertainty, suddenly we don't believe that he's the shepherd and overseer of our soul. It's the human condition. Pardon? It's the human condition. It's the human condition. But the assumption here is that you don't live like that. And you live in a, where the faith, is, you know, there's, a, there's dimensions to faith, you, there's depth to faith. So that when, when trouble, trouble dares come, when yeah. difficulty comes, what is it where some people can go, you know what, God, Jesus is Lord, posting in the, in the Facebook group, you know, and saying, the Lord is my shepherd, you know, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Where do the, where do you get the weapon? Where do you get the the wherewithal for that? When some people go, oh issue, where's God? Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. What is the other person doing? He seems to be going like, I'm coping with this. I'm going to fight this off. I'm going to stand firm. 
yeah. where the other person falls flat on the face. Well, you know that God's there all the time, no matter what, and they've accepted that. Yep. Yeah. You've got a consist- consistent devotional life as well. Okay. Also, being close means that you don't feel that that sort of distance from them. Mm. If you if you don't put in the time and the effort into the relationship, it's like any other relationship that mm. it, it dies away and you don't have the connection that you used to have. Yeah. And then, so, but sometimes that approach, yeah. When, when we when when we say that approach, we're not doing enough. Sometimes that drives us to work. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to put two hours in the morning to look at the Bible. Yeah, so then no, you get up at four, faith, yeah. right? And that doesn't help either. Relentlessly getting up earlier and earlier so you can strive, strive, strive. But the DNA, the central thing, is is not so much in the work that you're going to do, but your position before God as a Christian. Okay. Yeah. If you can understand and get that right, mm-hmm. your position before God, right? Because mm-hmm. it's about proximity. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so, what do you mean by position? Yeah, so. so Give me you said. No, but, but I'm talking about your position. What I mean is that is that you're a child, a dear little of child, and he is, if he's a shepherd, you're a sheep. Mm-hmm. And do you know what sheep are? Jupiter. They're pretty dumb, yeah. So, don't, don't put too much burden on yourself. To act out a perfect kind of like thing, he's just he's he's got his rod and his staff, and one of them's for knocking you on the head when you get it wrong, and the other one's for dragging you back onto the path. You know that's what the rod and the staff was for. Mm-hmm. So um, he's the shepherd. Now you don't have to go. Oh, what happens if he doesn't pull me back on the on the on the path? Well, he's the overseer of your soul. What else is he going to do? Yeah, he right. doesn't want you to go astray, but he knows you will. So he's, he's willing to do that. So the understanding is to see um, the Lord as a shepherd yeah. and as, as an overseer, and he cares. Shepherds care for the flock. Okay? And there's many things we could say about that. We've mentioned it loads of times about the, the way he puts the, um, the little lamb round his neck, and we've yeah. talked about things about protecting him from snakes and wolves and all that kind of thing. But then the yeah. snakes represent, you know, like uh, Satan, and the wolves represent false teachers. You know, so you've got all that kind of thing happening. He wants to protect you from all that stuff. Yeah. But if you cast off that kind of understanding and just go, right, the way I get um, top-end spirituality is by striving to take in as much scripture and understand it as possible. Right? You need to sit back, exhale, and go, yeah. sit back like, and just go, right, who am I in Christ? I'm his dear loved adopted child. It's a, it's mm. like, it's a revelation, isn't it? Mm. Of that. You know, when you say position, it's a revelation. So you can get up for 20 years, and I know people have done it, read their Bible diligently for an hour every morning for 20 years, and still not get that, because they haven't had that revelation that they are a child of God, you know, they, that God is always with them. Do you know what I mean? So, yes, you do have to work at a relationship, but really you just need to know who God is and who he says you are. Mm-hmm. Now, that can happen in five minutes, and for some people, like me, it takes a bit longer. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and it can take a long time, but I think that that revelation is... Right, Gary? Yeah, I yeah. think that, that there's... It's about, uh, it's about yes. knowing that you... The whole package that, of yeah. identity before we start to go into the nuts and bolts. So... You could quite rightly say you've got to have a great devotional time, worship God on a, you know an individual basis and as best we can corporately on Sundays, attend church, be there amongst the brethren, circles of righteousness, all that kind of thing. <coughs> but before that, you've got to settle in your mind that you're the one this is speaking to. He's the your shepherd and the overseer of your soul. And if you argue with that, you're arguing with a divine act that God the Father did. This is what Peter's telling us, what chapters 1, 2 and 3. God the Father, independent free will decision of himself, said, I want you to be the sheep in my flock. You and you, think of you now. Right? That's what he did. So what we do then is we start to think, well, how does that sit with, sit with us? And that's, we start to grow in Christ. But we can't grow in Christ by working it all out. We've got to just have these deep-seated understanding of identity, who we are, how we're positioned and all that kind of thing. So before we go on to doctrine, which is do, doctrine, things we do, we've got to have sorted that out. Because otherwise, your Christian life becomes, well, we'll read it. We'll read it here about what we do as Christians. But it's on the, it's on the background and the, um, the, um, the caveat that you understand completely that you are taken into God's family 
dearly loved, cherished, adored, and he's in the process of equipping you. Otherwise, we just go, right, let's get a list of things from chapter 3, 4, and 5 about how we should live our Christian life. Then it's drudgery. Because you're just carrying out a load of rules, trying to follow these rules, and then you're back to Old Testament because it's not about rules. What this does now is says, this is how you should be, given that you're spirit-filled, and given that you want to walk in the light, and given that you want to um, you know, walk in the assurance of fatherhood and shepherd. He's your shepherd and he's overseeing your very soul. Yeah? So given that, we'll read chapter 3. We'll, we'll read it tonight and we'll look at some things in there. But I don't want you going away. And if you hear this media again, listen to it again and again. Don't go away and think now we're on rules. Okay? Because it's all it's all done from a spiritful life and God engendering within you to, and to move you into these situations. Do you know what I mean? We should be walking a certain way and this is going to describe what it is. Happy? Well, maybe you're not happy, but I mean, there might be some homework to do in terms of like, God, thank you for being my father. I didn't really, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, and that that's something that we all need to kind of get into that space. Okay? Chapter 3, 1 Peter. So when it says wives in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, okay, it means in the same way that it says here. Okay. To this you were called because Christ was suffered for you, leaving an example that you should follow in his steps, that when he hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. So this is about submission to God's will, not about a husband who's giving you a really hard time and just going, it's fine, Christ suffered. Do you, do you understand the difference? Christ suffered. You know what I mean? It's about submission to God, submission to the Lord's will. Okay? And some people have read that wrong in the past and said that's a, that's a green, uh, green light for men to be rough with their husbands and women just go, I submit, I submit. And that's ridiculous. Okay? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. This is, this is why you're easy. So that, this, so that, just in case. It's like yeah. God's wives. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll yeah, get that. <laughs> wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands so that. If any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behaviour of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. You can stop me at any point and just kind of let's have a chat about some of this. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, I just like the translation I've got. I think it's making a different version. It says that you're like this. Speak up. I just quite like my New King James version where it says... um, uh, um, even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their lives. I like the, mm. I like the word conduct, the way people mm. conduct themselves. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yep. yeah, and it goes on to explain that, doesn't it? Three, your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. So that's not saying don't wear, don't be like that. It's saying it's yeah. not just that. It's, not, it's yeah. acknowledging you, know? you wear yeah. it, but it's not about that. Anyone can yeah, produce a shiny bin, you know what I mean? So mm. it's like. Yeah. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth to, in God's sight. Mm. For, this, for this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give, away to, give way to fear. Now here's the thing, husbands in the same way be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with the respect as the weaker partner. Now let's all, you know, that could cause a riot in some circles, yeah. but it means physically weaker. And if you're not physically weaker, everyone except um, Kim, I'll have you an arm wrestle. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kim's a fitness no, instructor, no, I ain't going there. So like, no, 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 Men definitely can use it. We vessel, as I says in the King James version. Mm. Yeah, vessel with the body, isn't it? For me, not me. It actually would mean and transpires was that 
we're not the ones who lead in the word, we're not the ones who, oh, this is biblically, we're not the ones. So we are a weaker vessel in that area, aren't we? Mm. As in, we can, I, I fellowship with people and I encourage people, but mm. I'm, I'm, you know, sitting there and doing what he's doing. Yeah. I'm not saying that what you said is wrong because what you said is right, but yeah. in this instance, it means physically weaker. Mm-hmm. It just does. Um, yeah. 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 And um, this is the thing what I wanted to go. We're all happy to get past that. Uh, what you said is right because it says it in other places. Yeah. Um, so, I think I've uh, forgotten my why, the whys of, of, of certain things. Um, the, the submit thing is hard for me to digest. Alright, and so in, um, if we, let's turn to Ephesians then, just yeah. quickly. <laughs> if my husband says no, that's no. Yeah. That's submitting. And I will always yeah. go to him if there's a decision yeah. to be made. I won't make a decision by myself. But under the assumption that your husband actually also reads the Bible, then it wouldn't be that scary because you'd better trust him. Just yeah. Yeah. Have your <laughs> I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. don't mind. Yeah. Like, you know, some guy off the street. It's like, you know, probably yeah. not. Oh, oh, it's, it's not going to be your husband. Like you do, then you know, you don't have to fight over who's making that decision. It's his yeah. final decision. I think that's. Okay. He respects you. You discuss it together, and what he says goes, and that's cool. I think a key word yeah. here is that um, a God following man. Yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah. somebody you can trust. Yeah. So it's like it's not saying that you know just marry any old scumbag, you know, you beat just yeah. submit it. No, it's not saying that. Oh, that's all right. Well, there's submit to Hitler, I wonder like that. Yeah. 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 Can I just throw in another important element to this in as well? Is that in Ephesians five twenty one it's going to that? Well, I'll just I'll read it if you trust that I'm reading that's what it is. Right. Ephesians five twenty one, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. The next verse, wives submit to your husbands as to the Lord, right? For the husband is the head of the wife, and Christ is the head of the church's body, which is his saviour. Now, the submit thing there, in that context, was in a, in a house church. You might be in somebody else's house, right? And uh, that's how the first church is when this was written, especially Ephesus. It's called the Darling Church. It was the church that God really valued. And they met in homes um, around food and stuff. Um, so what would happen is that, say, that there's an husband and wife in the room, and there's an elder... And he says, I've m- I mentioned this before, haven't I? Uh, I think we all should all go camping at Yanchep in September. What do you think? Right? And, um, you know, some people might be saying, yeah, independent, you know, you single people, yeah, I think that's a good idea. But the woman and the man together, it's not the elder who makes the decision for your family, it's the husband. Yes, submit to yeah. your own husband, yeah. as it says. So it's yeah. referring to being in a, in a group. Yeah. yeah. So, so the verse before said Christians should be submitting to one another anyway. Mm. Everybody, it doesn't matter who you are. But where marriage are concerned, the wife mm. submits to the husband because he's the guy who's making the decisions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So Helen, you've got to do what Gary says, but I don't. It's great. Praise <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the Lord for that. <laughs> so, so say Brett, for instance, um, was an elder amongst us. And he said, and he was just saying, and he's giving an instruction, he's saying there's a group, what do we think, and all that kind of thing. Then Helen, my wife, wouldn't really be able to go, yeah, I think that's right, until she consulted me. Because you're representing a family unit as yeah. well. Yeah. So you have to show unity. Yeah. So generally speaking, you get that scenario where um, we'd, we are a, the, the church family is secondary to the family. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. first before that. No. Okay. Now you might say, Oh, I love my church. And we do, but it's like the, the individual family is an autonomous entity before it comes together and meets mm-hmm. as a church, the ecclesia. Mm-hmm. So therefore there has to be um, a, a, a leadership structure that remains within the stronger entity within the bigger entity. Do you get it? Mm-hmm. What if you're at work in a Christian organization like Alter One? Then you're not at church. So you don't have to no. Yeah, yeah, because the the chapter before said well, submit to your leaders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your leaders. Yeah. So anyone who's in leadership above you in the work environment or in the government, for example, yeah. you submit to. Well, that's kind of yeah. But it's not it's submit without. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not like you know. Not have to say it all wrong. But, if they started yeah. telling you to start worshiping Caesar, you mm-hmm. could probably not. 
could do that. Yeah, but then if you go back in the Old Testament, <laughs> it talks about that a lot, doesn't it? When yeah. you're allowed to say uh, no and when you should submit. Yeah, but I mean, what we're specifically trying to, you know, like thrash out this all kind of thing. It's um, it's a difficult thing in this day and age because we're 2,000 years after the event, and a lot of things have happened, and, and especially this has happened as well, where a lot of this has been used, the Bible, to be to oppress women, right? Mm. And it's yeah, been wrong, 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 yeah. right? Mm. So, and women have been second-class citizens mm. and all that kind of thing. But the opposite side to that is this, the thing goes to the other side of the scale, mm. and you get women's lib and feminism and all that kind of thing. Right. Right. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I could say as a sing- who was mm. a single parent, I'm not the only single parent, you know, six years. Yeah, mm. yeah you've been... Oh, wow. So as a single parent, now I'm married. You're si- you've been single for six years. I was a single parent for six and a half years, yeah. Yeah. Before, and I just got married to Eckhart now. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like when I was married before, he wasn't very good at making decisions. So I've always been the boss. So I've, and always been independent. So it was hard to change. But, but to be honest, by the time that Eckhart came along, and because I do trust him, I was more than happy to submit. Because I'm really... I'm really happy that I can trust someone else to actually carry the burdens and make decisions with money and pay bills and, you know, because it was all on my shoulders. But like you were saying before, it really is about, you know, it's not a hard thing to do when, you know, when you've got someone that you can trust that knows the order of things and, you know, so I feel like I'm safe to, the to always do that. Because that's you, you yeah. as... as um, um, best right. in, yeah. your best interests yeah. at heart so yeah. in the way that you're not you're not submitting as in you're just doing what you're told no, no. it's you, about trusting him yeah. and, and god and you know too many cooks spoil the broth anyway you know like just pick a pick a job you know or whatever works for you but you know he's better at gardening and i'm better at keeping the house clean you know what they you know so that's how we we were wrong yeah. you know what i mean like and as we said, all of this is contextual with what's just been said. There's no chapter headings in the original Greek, right? So they're all flawed. And all this kind of submitting to God and, you know, making him um, Lord and coming under that and all these things where he's positioned firmly in the ultimate authority structure in your life. And that includes above your husband, you know, God comes first in all relationships yeah. and all that kind of thing, um, if you want it healthy, that is. Then all this is in the context of that. It's a joy for a godly man and woman to exercise biblical leadership if God is in the right place in that marriage yes. because God will bless that thing. But here's the thing that husbands need to be careful of. Listen to this. Husbands, in the same way, this is 3-7, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Now, what things hinder your prayers? Abusing your wife. Abusing your wife. <laughs> You start getting in her face, you know. God's about tell you what, you've got issues. I'll tell you. What. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, that was one Peter three, um, seven onwards. So yeah, there's there's kind of subtle warnings in there, but it all comes from um, um, husbands. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for her. Right. So it's a very marriage is a ultimately holy thing, you know. If, if in this if in this group there's ever a request from anyone to go and talk into a marriage, the first thing, if it was us, me and Ellen, who was asked to do that, is to say, we, we are stepping on holy ground. Absolutely stepping on holy ground. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't play fast and loose with people's marriages, you know, mm-hmm. and all that kind of thing. This is like the, the, the absolute thing. Now, this goes right back to the garden. I've said this before, you know, the fall, uh, before the fall, uh, when Adam and Eve were created. Um, um, they were made from the same being and um, when you come together male and female you come together and the two become one mm. Okay, so it recreates the image of God on earth now how, how holy is that so Perfect. yeah and that's why it's attacked mm. marriage is attacked it's absolutely honest it's like boom and you yeah, know this smash and you know it's like yeah, yeah it's being the, the enemy wants to get in, into, into the centre of your, your marriage and split it up and cause problems and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have to keep our eyes on the Lord. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next bit then. If you're happy with that, any more questions on that? Um, I might have asked this before, but I can't, um, I can't recall what it was. Um, so you know in the same way that wives um, submit to their husbands, hmm. um, children submit to their parents, right? Yeah. Um, so my... My question is, like, at what point 
Okay, so say we've got the same context of like, we're going camping, oh, who's going camping? Um, at what point could like mum and dad say no thanks and one of the kids say yes? You know? Like or, or is that not? Oh right, in the church yeah. setup. Oh, when when you when you're 18 and you're considered to be an adult, and you. But well, there's another thing at work there. Oh, thanks. There's another thing at work there is that some families, and I hope this is still us, and I've not checked in for a while, is that I've got my three um, over 20, not sorry, not over 20 children. That's busier than I ever wanted to be. <laughs> but all my children are over 20. Right? right. So, but I and I still hope that they willingly come under the leadership, yeah. and it is a rank. I'm sorry, but it is. There's, yeah. there's, there's, that, that is rank, okay, yeah. and um, it has to be because it's leadership, and um, and and God still works through through um, even as you get older through the oversight of parents. Now there comes a time when you cleave and leave, okay, and you are in the ideal situation. It's not always ideal. Um, is that you cleave and leave and you go and create another family which is the image of God because male and female come together in marriage. That's how it, the thing's supposed to work. And then, you know, you've got your own autonomous family then and she's under his leadership and, and that kind of thing. So, but in that situation, if, um, if you were over like 18 and you were, yeah, I'll go camping, then that's, that's, that's how it works. But it doesn't break the bond either. It doesn't, it doesn't do that. I think it's important to mention though that if you have, if you bring love into this, what is love? It's patience, it's kind, it's understanding, you know? So if there's love in amongst this ranking and order, then any self any father that has respect for his wife or his children is going to listen to your opinion, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, do you know what I mean? And, and, and you'll be able to put up your case, well, actually, I think we should go camping because of this, this, and this, and this, you know what I mean? And you would listen then, you know, because you're a good father, you know? Yeah, so it's so probably, but it'd be a conversation that you had outside the group at another yeah, time. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, because, mm. like, um, yeah. in, in the here and now, like, because I think a lot of this, like, uh, isn't, like, the wife submit to your husband, um, in the here and now, yes, wife submit to your husband, but, um, like, in, in a in a private context, they may be able to discuss it, you know? Mm. Yes. Um, yeah. So, mm. I don't know, like, um, I think I'm, I'm more than happy mm. to have under dad's umbrella, that's what I like to call it, like, Marriage does. I mean, the thing is with you guys, because you're over like 20 and everything like that, you, you are free with your choices and decisions. So there's, there's none, none of us are saying you must, you must, you, you could live in our house and, you know, I just don't, you don't want to because you've lived, you know, as, as our kids for a while and you know that it's wise to still come under. But you are, you are making that decision. <laughs> as a child, as a, yeah, but as a child, we made that decision. <laughs> we made that decision. But when you became 18, this is the way we're doing it, it's our model, we don't have to put it on anyone, but we see it this way, is that now you are saying, I agree, I want to come under that. It's not just because you've got a room in the house, hopefully. Uh, and if it is, I'm doubling your rent, but that's another thing. <laughs> 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 but, um, but you see what I mean? It's kind of like you've got lots of latitude, mm-hmm. and I hope that you still see that we've, we've, there's value in our wisdom and, and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But, um, but then there's, you've got independence elements of your life where you're, you're branching out and you've been given a lot of rope and um, yeah. over it's time. Very, so. It's a very grey area. I suppose it's, it's, it's kind of a grey area because it's not touched upon in this because it was a very different culture back then. Mm. I think there's you know, more rights of passage back then, so it's pretty yeah. much obvious. Like, mm. yeah. I'm sure there is scripture that states that they stay under the parents' banners until they get married and oh, then oh, 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 to go oh, oh, along and then there is scripture that well, he will leave his back family to go to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to create their own, yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah, Corinthians. Yeah. I think it's outside of church as well, but I think it's just, I think it's especially poignant if you're in the group, but also when you're out of it, it's still there, the, yeah. the structure of it. I, I think a lot of it comes to confidence as well, like if you're secure in who you are, then you don't need to feel, you know, bad. Like I, when, when I, before, when I first started Bible study, before I became a Christian, so that was like, 13 years ago, it was so funny, but this was one of the first things they talked about, and the pastor went, you're going to love this, and I was like, submit to your wives, seriously, have you met my husband? Anyway, <laughs> I don't want to be mean to him now, we're good, we're cool now, but, you know, um, it was like, 
I really struggled. Oh, sorry, I forgot your name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, nice one. Um, that's really totally. Yeah, so I, and I did. I struggled with the whole submissive thing, and even that submissive to husbands and submissive to, you know, like my boss is, you know, 10, 15 years younger than me and a male and all that stuff. And um, But because I'm more secure in who I am, I know that God's not insulting me, even by calling me the weaker vessel, because he made us feminine, and, and I had become very unfeminine and hard because of had the circumstances I was in to survive and take care of everything. So I really like the fact that he's restored me back to that, and I'm, I, quite, I feel quite comfortable in the fact that I cry easily and I'm you know, quite soft and sensitive, but I also know that I can be very strong. I can stand on the front line. I'm respected by people. And how bad is? And how to you know, hold smash. You know, I have a lot of passion. And, you know what I mean? So I think that, you it's know, like, as you get older, I think the fact that you are is because you're very, you know, you've been raised, you're confident, and you know your position. And, and just because someone else is the leader, and in this case your dad, it's not... We're yeah, not supposed to get offended, and we're not supposed to feel oh, insecure uh, or just, yeah. or inferior. Yeah. That was not the intention. In fact, it's quite the opposite. If you're confident, you can just go under someone else's leadership. Like yeah. Ross being my boss, he's 15 years younger. You know, I have no problem well, with that. My boss is about 30 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you have a problem you've, with that. Though. You've got um, oh, that, uh, what's yeah, his name? He's 30, he's exactly David. 30 years younger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Simon, 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 yeah. I don't actually. No, I don't. He's a really great boss. Yeah. Yeah, and we're recording this. Anyway, so moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let's not to mention names. <laughs> Michael Cole. No, it's yeah. all right. No, it's fine. It's, it's all um, You know, I know yeah. that came back to all my family experience. Mm. I just... Yeah. If you don't like something, I think that's the idea is that you've got to take that with God, really, because mm. he's never wrong. So if, we're not, <laughs> so if we're not comfortable with something, we've got to look inside us. Find out. Anyway, I said enough there, Gary. No, so are we happy with this whole kind of like husbands and wives thing? Because it does come up in other letters and it pads it out even more. It's just that we do have to refer to other places to get balance in this. And when this submission thing that we struggle with, don't forget the, the, the first thing that is said is all Christians should submit to one another. Mm. And I don't, you know, obviously, that doesn't mean doing what they say. It means have the attitude that you're going to come up there and you're not going to control them. Mm. And you're not going to be controlled by them. So submission is something when you, you know, it's not, it's like, I'm not going to control you. As yeah. well as it is, don't control me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So. I, I just got something to yeah. um, Just with the whole, like, um, it seems to be kind of targeted as, like, don't get upset women, but I'm more like, don't get upset men, you've got so much pressure on you. Mm. Like, I, yeah. You've got to lead a family yeah, unit, you've got to, you've got to keep it together, like, it's, that's a lot of pressure. So mm. I'm like, you know, we're, we're having a good old time, like, you know, <laughs> this is submission, I, know, right? I can make a decision, <laughs> you know, so it's like, um, it's true. I think that that's, that's quite a heavy thing for guys. I think. And like I said before, and you guys have to have babies. Everything. So I mean, <laughs> I conceived the discussion. Yeah, yeah but let's say you guys have to have babies. It says here a week apart. I'm going. Even if I could do that, I don't think I would. Especially when you have seen babies. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> the same thing. So, yeah, like whenever I, whenever I hear this teaching, it's always I'm sorry, ladies, mm. but. It should be sorry, guys. You've got a lot to do, guys. Like, wow. Yeah. But it's that uh, their responsibility is much greater yeah, than ours. Right. We're so the contributor. We, we contribute and we help, but they're yeah. actually the yeah. ones who are providing that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so just yeah. Have that. Were, yeah. There was a thing about, yeah, this whole thing about leadership and stuff. It's like um, some people wanted to be in church leadership. You know, in, in the traditional structures that we've seen, and and some people like, and they all this big debate a few years ago in Britain was about women becoming bishops, okay? Oh yeah. And it wasn't so much the fact that they think they should be bishops; it's just that they wanted to be in control, like everybody does. You know what I mean? Because if you really are a Christian leader, you look at the um, life of Paul the apostle, and it's horrific. He just gets beaten senseless in the spiritual warfare all the time. You know, and he's got a thorn in his flesh that the Lord won't remove because he needs to keep humble. So he's living this cycle of guilt and, you know, he's trying to just, to get up in the morning must have been a feat. 
you know, yeah. and all, you don't hear all the women, you don't hear all the women going, "Let me be one of them." <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Let me no. let me not be one of them. Right, so let's move that's on. That's why we're supposed to be different. No, well, that's what I said. The article I got in trouble was it's oh. not women in, as bishops; it's bishops. Yeah. It shouldn't be in. Should yeah. So anyway, I got shouted down a bit by some people. So. <laughs> all right, I'm suffering for doing good. In my is the title that is not in the Greek. One Peter three eight. Finally, he says finally is like another three chapters, no two chapters. <laughs> Finally, all of you living, all of you, right? So this is not husbands and wives now. He's talking to you guys who go to, you who are believers who meet together in circles of righteousness such as this one. Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. Well, that, well that's, that's an hour, isn't it? Trying to pick the bones out of that because, you know, that's just challenge after challenge, isn't it? So um, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. <laughs> But with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good, and he must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Remember? Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing hinders your prayers. So back to verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Can you see how it ties up? Mm. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened, but in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Now, this is instructing you in what to do, in what we originally talked about. How do we drill down and force into our thinking that God is the shepherd and overseer of our souls? Here, in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. (coughs) Now, that's that's just a nice, not just a nice saying. You've got to set apart and make it that Jesus, the Lord, is the very, very ultimate authority figure of everything. And that includes all your doubts, all your fears, all your, the um, collapse of rational thinking about the Bible and all that kind of, all the, all the unbelief, disbelief, all the experiences that you've had in your life, all the past, all the tragedies, all the chaos, the present chaos. The, 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 the perception that your life's only going to be chaos and it's only going to be detached and you're not like everybody else, you're the one who God doesn't oversee, right? It's not true. You are in, implicated by this text, okay? He is the shepherd and overseer of your soul and you and I and all of us have to set our hearts apart, uh, set Christ as Lord in our hearts, okay? You got it's, it's something you have to purposefully do. You have to think a lot about that. You get this thing coming in and the, 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 the world starts to become black and white because you start to get that sense of, oh my goodness, what, God, Jesus, I need, this, I need this to become real right now. I need my faith to be... Have you set Christ as Lord of that situation? Have you made him Lord of that bill you can't pay? Have you made him Lord of unemployment? Have you made him Lord of the present work situation? And this is about prayer. Now we are into prayer. You know, about saying, God, I want you to be Lord of this. I want you to be the king. And um, your word says that you already are. It's me who's the one who's trying to catch up to the fact that you're the Lord of my future. You're the Lord of my, you know, potential partner. You're the Lord of my job situation. You're the Lord of whether I pay my house off before retirement. You're the Lord of whether I'm going to always have a car that runs correctly or... You're the Lord of, am I always going to be lonely? You're the Lord of, you know? And all these things, we just let them jar our consciousness. And they, they take, um, they, they squat us in our mind as Christians. We, make, we, we need to make Christ Lord of all these things. Yeah. So there's this thing called the Word of Faith movement. And I've been talking to someone in here before about this. Right, it's called the Word of Faith movement. It's what all the money preachers are doing, and it's saying that if you just say it, then it's going to be okay. Now I know it makes sense to some degree, 
right? That if you just keep confessing it. Now the thing is, you do, we do have to change our language to be positive. Definitely have to, right? Mm, you do. Life. But in and of itself, it has no power, right? All it does is stops you listening to your own words of negativity and driving yourself down a, a rabbit warren of despair. It just does, right? But in and of themselves, this is what the Word of Faith movement says: that the words that you speak have power, mm. right? And they can actually change things. Like well, yeah. But <laughs> you were saying, I mean, I, I, I remember I spoke to you a while back about a book I'd read that um, was, talk, was talking in this way. It was saying, you know, uh, work, you know, use the words of the, of, of the Bible, you know, and uh, speak sort of. Yeah, so if you, if you, if you, what you're doing there, right, there's very subtle differences, and this is how subtle false te- teaching is. Mm-hmm. If you've learnt something about the world and everything like that, um, and then, and then you, your prayer life, what you're saying mm-hmm. and speaking will come out of the abundance of your heart, and your language will be different, and you start to articulate your ex- living experience differently, okay? And you might even, but, but the, it's a, it's an incantation to start, saying over and over again even the word of god and thinking that you saying it out with your breath is going to change anything you have no power you can't resurrect anything you can't bring anything to life if anything we are the worst people in the world to entrust this to ever right but god by his grace has done that we are subject to the one who can resurrect and bring things to life he can change things in front of your eyes should he wish to do it blind people saw lame people walked okay and he can do it the fact that he doesn't is another question but to say that we we speak and god changes things is a blasphemy you know and the word of faith teachers are teaching it some of the some of the people you see in the shot in the um, christian bookshop looking at you going buy this book you know your best life now and all that kind of stuff they're all saying this and it's lies yeah they're all saying it yeah and, and this is why people have got it into the con- even people who don't want to be near it it's somehow got into the consciousness because some of the people they used to trust are still saying this and it's unbiblical you tell me where it says in the bible that your words are any power whatsoever power of life and death yes. yeah in the tongue Proverbs. but that doesn't mean <laughs> that you're going to resurrect somebody by speaking out or kill somebody by speaking out it doesn't mean that see the difference you have the power of life and death in somebody's life because you, you're sowing thoughts into the red. Yeah, that's right. You know? Like yeah. children, what you're yeah. raising, they're going to... Yeah. But the Word of Faith movement says that if I speak it out, then it's going to change. Yeah. The, and, you know, when were you God? When are you going to be God? Never. But we, They have scriptures mm. that they use that back, mm. don't they? Back that stuff up. I'd like to see them because like it's just whatever, mm. yeah. But you can you manipulate them. Scriptures like say, it's very subtle, them, yeah. subtle mm. changes. You know, like Jesus says, "You'll do whatever I've done and more." And they're going, "See, whatever He did, we should be literally doing." You know, casting out demons, mm. doing this, and you know, by the word of and what they're saying. Yeah, that's what they're teaching, and we should be doing that. You know? Is it? Yeah, I suppose I'm sort of a bit tired, so I've got a bit of jet lag as regards to understanding. <laughs> Um, so, yes, you can't speak something out if it's in the mind well and say, oh, this is going to happen. But you speak out something that you are requesting from God. Yeah, you, you, yeah we've had this conversation. You haven't we? words yeah. and you're saying, yeah. God, you know, please help me in this respect. Mm. So, you know. Um, yeah. so you're not really even talking it out not, and you're yeah. not really having... Uh, you're gonna gonna go to God. Yeah. For Who that. has that power? Authority. Yeah, it, yeah. it depends on where you're where you're putting that power. If you're putting that power in your words and you're saying my words will make this happen, yeah. that's that's where you're wrong. If you put if you put the power in God and request that power, yeah. yeah so think, pra- prayer doesn't change anything. Got only God, your request yeah. to God and God's action. So I say to people who so, say, so, so like you know when I those talking about like something like seriously you when i'm in the Quran bookshop and i say mm. the joel austin and the whatever well, say I'm, things like your best life now oh is that who wrote that oh sorry or something, i don't know <laughs> 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 that's in the bible as well or something, something. <laughs> um it's him <laughs> it's him guaranteeing your best life when he's not got 
Oh, yeah, he's putting power in his own No, he'll tell you what the Bible says, how you can have the best life, but he won't be stood in your church group that's getting attacked by the devil every day, right, trying to install it into people and attach people who are beautiful believers to and to source the self in Christ, okay, because that's, that's, that's what it's about. And um, so I, I could write a book about it, you know, and just say, oh, yeah, this is what the Bible says you can potentially be. But the fact is, is that there's a shortfall in the human condition, as Rachel said right at the very beginning. We are strugglers. We're always, you were supposed to struggle. Everyone in here struggles. We're going to find strugglers all the way through, and the New Testament. Strugglers, 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 right? And um, so what happens here, they're saying this stuff to us, and we are well advised to do what we talked about at first, and really get proximity from the Lord, and have the Lord really, um, you know, make a priority to, to as you set him apart in your hearts as Lord. You know, over all things. So, you know, because you know, I was just thinking about what happened in my house. Mm. Uh, you know, and that's not very much put yourself under the Lord's leadership. You know, you know what happens in a typical family. You know, you've got I don't know say, what happens in it. I only know what happens in my family. Yeah, no, but I'm thinking. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. You know, yeah. um, certain types of ways of acting. Um, putting both of us in that mm. uh, behavior. So then behaviours that you don't like, you need to take to board yourself. So the behaviours, and before you're looking at somebody else's behaviour, you need to look at your own. Oh, and yeah. And bringing that well, I mean, mm. you know, I'm not, not, I'm not in general, in general, yeah, what I'm saying yeah, is like, yeah, that I mean, if I'm, if I'm mm. upset about something, yeah. it's all because, you well, uh, just, Excuse me, will you just have a look at this? What's your yeah. pattern? This, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And when I do a bad pattern, then I can see more clearly. I think about them, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I can see those connections because, mm. you know, I'm the adult in the family, so I can see myself really self responsible one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a little I'm not the man of the family. Yeah. 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 When you're saying about speaking in faith, speaking things out of faith. Because yeah, you do have the, the old verse, the old typical verses, you know, and without faith it's impossible to please God. Mm. Um, but uh, 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 that Hebrews. Um, and also when God has promises that he has in the Bible that you pray and claim for mm. and say yes, you know, God promised me this. Yep. You know? Um, and it's not that I've promised me a land game in the front garden, but mm. yeah, mm. so but so I guess it's, it's how do you distinguish between what is faith, faith praying and what is claiming promises that God did promise. I tend to um, like I said earlier. So it's there's a grey area. So, you know, mm-hmm. there's the I want to want a portion of the front garden versus no, God promised me peace and he promised to be beside me and promised to shoulder us on my challenges. You know, those, those are so. so they so never you know, leave or forsake you. Their that's promises. Correct. Yeah, 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 that's a promise. Because it's yeah. your confidence in God, I find, in all of this. is your confidence in God and how big he is and how powerful he is, you know. Mm. And when, when I have struggles, I have confidence that sometimes my want is not his will. And yeah. I'm going, yeah. oh, I don't want this to be going on, yeah. I don't want this to be happening, you know, but his will is, I'm going to yeah. use this. You need to praise and worship me through this, and yeah. you need yeah. to honour me yeah. through this, yeah. because when you do, that's when your rewards will come. Yeah. That's when yeah. things change. We were yeah. promised that you won't get consumed by it. Mm. There was never yeah. any promise that it wouldn't hurt, or yeah. last oh, a long no. time, mm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, that's you know. correct. Mm. Yeah, I'm just saying that, that there, there yeah. is an essence of faith there, and yeah. God's expecting that. So it's not it's not it's not um, saying that we don't have faith. So um, yeah. the the as we the my illustration is that it's raining in this room and it's raining all the promises that have been promised to you. Now the adjustment is what is what we have to make as individuals to say, am I in a place to believe and receive those promises? So that's something that God's doing anyway, and you don't have to make any prayer for Him to be gracious and merciful towards you because he is in his nature gracious and merciful and you've been brought on side as an adopted child so it's just a case of us lining ourselves and going do you know what i'm going to walk fresh today i'm going to have a fresh heart about this because before i've even asked for it he's going to be gracious and merciful but like you say the the thing is is if we say based upon your grace and mercy lord i pray that and then believing that he you in he's in your control or your words themselves have power is taking it beyond the bounds of scripture 
you see the difference? Gary, you're talking about that mm. nearly every, that's what every modern church is teaching. I've got heaps of books mm. on the bookshelf that tell you. That's what well, I'm trying to think what they call that. Um, yeah, knowing your identity, you know, all that sort of, um, um, yeah. oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, on. All those ones, they're, mm. they're teaching that, um, you know, that you're. But here's the thing, right? Like, dominion over everything, that's the thing. Dominion, theology. dominion over mm. everything, and that you are, you know, you are. As a co-heir of Christ, and you are Christ-like, and because His Spirit's in you, then you can start. You know, I, I could say, oh, can you know, yeah, Lord, can you can you heal Amory's whatever? Or I can say, I speak to that elbow and I command it to be healed in Jesus' name. And that's what, yeah, that's what the, the, all those books and that are telling us that we're supposed to be doing. So, because knowing who we are and using scriptures. Mm. So, so the subtle difference between that is that if I'm sat here. And I know that God can heal, and he can and does heal, right? Um, and I read in there that God can and does heal, but then I assume that because I'm a Christian that he wants me to do it now in this moment to somebody. Well, good luck with that, because there's billions of testimonies where that hasn't worked, okay? Yeah. But if you sit there biblically and you go, God, you're a healing God, you're a great God of healing, and Lord, by your grace, by your mercy, heal someone, right? Mm -hmm. And then in, that time, in, in, in a specific time frame, you get um, a bubbling up of... It's almost like your heart starts beating yeah, and you just know yeah. that you know that you know that God wants to do something and you go, oh, you want me to? And then it's irresistible because you, you'll go over and pray for that person. Mm. And this has happened amongst us, you know. It's happened um, here and there, you know, where people have gone. And it's also happened where you've felt real compassion and need and you've prayed for people and it hasn't happened, you know, because we just love people, don't we? But the difference is if I sit here and the subtle difference in the error is if I go based upon the words yeah, saying that God's a healing God, I can heal that person. You've put yourself in God's shoes. Oh dear. Mm. It's like if someone mm. has a, the um, Lord uses them as a vessel, and they then pray over somebody uh, in humility, and and that person then receives that gift of healing from the Lord. But then they go around going, "I am a healer. That's what I do." I think that's mm. that's. Yes. The, yeah, the, the, the yeah. You know, I'm a healer, you know, come to me for prayer and I will heal you. Well, no, that's not right. That's not right. I will God speak use me. and come before the Lord and ask him to use me as a vessel as he chooses, you know, but you can't be declaring that you're the healer, you know. That's um, what Balaam did, isn't it? Hmm? That's what Balaam did, isn't it? Like he, he found he had a gift and then he decided to kind of exploit it. Exploit it. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, sorry, I speak about my limited knowledge. And That's what you're here for. That's what we're all here for. Uh, you go in Quran and you've got all these books on healing, right? So, what's that all about? Is that correct? Is the when are they correct or not correct? Because obviously, as a Christian, you want to learn to pray that mm. someone will heal, mm. you know? So, what, under what circumstances? Mm. You, <laughs> well, you pray in the Lord to heal that person, not you. I know what you mean. Yeah, there's like 50,000 books yeah, out there all claiming just, to have the answer to those questions. But that's the thing though, those books don't, that it, you, but it's all about it's all about yeah. your prayer. Like if you want to, if you feel you know someone's sick and you want to pray for healing, it's all about you talking to God about that. It's not about you know reading a book because James so and so says you know you can do this and you can do that. No, you can't. You can pray about it though, and you can ask the Lord to do it. And it's no use at all reading a book on healing. So, well, it gets to the point where you've read enough and then you yeah. start thinking, this is just nonsense. I just stop reading them. Yeah, so the, the, the only thing that you were supposed to be given is the Word of God yeah. right, and the yeah. gifts associated with it. Mm -hmm. So when this is articulated and told you that um, it just says that God's the healer and he might just issue forth through one of us to heal, you know, mm -hmm. and we, keep, we have to keep praying for that and hoping and believing, you know, that's all cool and all that stuff. But in no way would you say, oh, because that says that... Um, God can heal, and and that means that I'm a healer. Come, come over here and let me put my filthy hands on you. Mm. But here's the problem, right? One of the one of the issues is this: 
is that when they read the scriptures, they don't understand what they're reading, and I'll tell yeah. you exactly why. Context, right. Yeah. So you've, you've got two dispensations. You've got the where we're living now, where you've got um, God is the healer and he can and does heal. You've got the millennial reign, where all God's children will be perfectly healed, perfectly, you won't have need for anything, You'll no tears in your eyes, all that kind of thing. You'll have a body that can't be injured, killed or destroyed, and you'll be there with a crown on your head, ruling and reigning with Christ. Right? They don't know that that happens, they haven't read the scriptures properly, so they mix the two up, and the ones from the millennial reign, where there's perfect health and wealth, they put into this this dispensation and say that's for now and then simply they have not rightly divided the word of God can you see it mm. rightly divided they're not doing it correctly so therefore they write a book charge you twenty dollars whatever it is to tell you that they don't know what the Bible says or to tell you to read the Bible and pray yeah yeah right can I uh, sorry Hmm. We're not moving yeah. on. That's about it for tonight. The scripture yeah. where, it talks, well, where it talks about Jesus and the boat, the storm, and everything, mm. and he says, "Don't you know who you are?" Right? Yep. And that they should calm the storm. God's children. There, um, we get that scripture is used a lot to back up the fact that we, yes, we, you know, we all know mm. that it's God, and we're nothing without God. But that same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, and that we should know our authority. Right? Mm. Taking that story and that we we can literally, you know, calm storms, move mountains, raise the dead and heal the sick and lay mm. hands on each other and all the rest of it. So how do you explain what's what's that story then? Um so what what kinda happened there was less about power and more about protection. Mm. So it's um it's as if um okay, so I'll I'll take an example. So I hypothetically I am in some Horrible financial trouble or something. Yeah. Um, and then I, I come to mum and dad and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm like, I can't pay my bills. And, and my, my dad will come to come and say, say, Don't you know who you are? You're my daughter. I can look after you. Yeah. It's it, he, He's not saying, Don't you know who you are? You can just fix this. You know, you've got power over this. Yeah. He's saying, I've got power over this. It's, it's you. don't you know whose you are? Not don't who don't you, you are. Don't you know who you belong to? you are. Yeah. Don't you know who you belong to? So when it's time to mm. come, you can rely and trust on mm. God's yeah. faithfulness. I learned that the hard yeah. way, so yeah. <laughs> that one, but yeah. yeah. But no, I'm just saying that this is mm. this, this slight subtle yeah. Yeah. changes in the scriptures that they're, mm. that, you know, that's why I'm at this Bible study, isn't it? Well, you know, because like, I've been reading books like, over the years and thinking, you know what, this doesn't even tie up. It's not in there. It's not even working, mm. is it? Certain know, life life your own life life health and wealth or whatever. I'm still broken. I'm still sick. It's because you're in this dispensation, but you, when you, the the Lord gloriously transforms our bodies and the, it all starts kicking off. We've. It's, it's yeah, so you know, important. this is still something that's got to stick better in my head because I'm thinking about the part of Matthew that I'm, uh, uh, I've been concentrating on, and the fact that Jesus, um, they can't heal that guy that's demon possessed. Mm. Um, and he says you have little faith mm. and it also says in the same book about the fact that Jesus gave the disciples I think it says the power to heal mm. oh, the, 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 the gifts of the what? spirit the gifts of the spirit are still active it was for them it is for us right so um, the why isn't God cascading out of us the gifts of the spirit like he did it in there and the reason is because we've got to get to grips with what this says and we've got to get to grips with it's not about us it's about them so every book you take off Quran sh- shelf you've got to be careful what you're it's doing it's not about us it's not it's about them who is so it's not about us it's about him ah. yeah so every book you take off Quran shelf and read it looking for answers you're looking at the wrong book it's there right and then um, and if you're impatient then you'll buy 20 books and read all 20 because you're impatient to find out something that and God's probably there going well, read the books. You just confuse yourself, yeah. and yes. that's what you've done. You've confused yourself. Yes. So, and the well, it's a lovely story. In a, you know, what do you call it? In a, it's a, like a fairy story thing, isn't it? You know, you think, oh, you know, oh, the, the books look. You, well, you know, to think that you can do those things, you know. Yeah. If God can do them things through you. Through it's you. And that's what he was saying. Yeah. But it's subtly, um, subtly deceptive.
that she was yeah. saying this yeah. thing of when it's ready, it's, it's read, like it's readily available, and we should be able to do it all the time at any point, and that's how we should be operating. But like you say, mm. Jesus and the disciples, they were on a different it's all mission about, than us at the time. It's all it's about, this. and this is the sort they were equipped to do what they yeah. had to do at that time, and God would equip us at the time He needs us to do it. And the faith is more you know? to see if, like, Ethan had a thing, and we prayed, and we believed, you know, that he would provide whatever his will was, and that would be good enough for us, whatever, yeah, whatever it, was. it can. Yeah. And that's the faith, is, you know, I like, yeah. I know what the Lord can do if he wants to, yeah. um, and then I know that he might not, that might not be the right time, but, mm. you know, that humility of going, well, whatever it is, it's your will, and we're going to trust you in that. You know, mm. that's that's that, I that think faith. What it what it means to me, all this talk tonight, is a realizing this thing about God is the Almighty One. You're not, mm. and you're going to be very humble. You know, sometimes when I hear people pray, and I think, well, why are they being such a mouse? You know, mm-hmm. it's not a mouse. I'm, I'm not being derogatory. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. trying to explain why. You know, the way I hear things, this like total awareness of God's power. You know, yeah. And it's like, um, mm-hmm. you know, um, I suppose you know we're all. Well, I've always been in search of magic potions. Mm. You know, and that's something that I'm, you know, very conscious of the fact that. Uh, yeah. So, so in the Book of Acts, when when we saw the amazing things that happened there, incidentally, it probably wouldn't happen like that the way it happened again because that was special dispensation with those apostles. Yes. Okay, so when you when you've got the church and and as it exists today, this is the the principle is this is that Jesus lives in you and he wants to get out. Okay, and the only reason, the only way he can get out is to break the vessel that he's in. That doesn't mean smash you to pieces and kill you, right? But it means broken, right? But um, here's the thing: the, the apostles, when um, they did what they did in Acts, and subsequent people that have done things um, subsequently, um, have subsequently through history, subsequently through their lives, um, they've have to be broken first. So whenever, yeah. whenever I'm not performing miracles and all that, or even operating in the gifts of the Spirit, or even being nice to people mm-hmm. in Jesus' way. Mm-hmm. The reason is, is because I'm too willful, right? Now, this is all of us. Yeah. You're too willful, I'm too willful. We're not broken enough, and we need to get before the Lord. Now, that's not condemnation. That's just saying, welcome to the journey. So when we go through tough mm-hmm. times and all that, yeah. maybe you can look at it this way, and we'll leave it at this, is that when we go through suffering and tough times, as Peter's t- telling us about um, it's, bre- it's trying to break us sufficiently so that we can, number one, see him and behold him through who he is, risen and glorified in his Father's throne. And secondly, so that he might, should he wish to, should he wish to, and it's his, it's his doing, nobody else's, it's his gracious, um, he's in control will to do it, um, to work through us, then we need to be broken. We, ne- we need to be w- less willful. We need to lay down our arms and just fall on our faces before him in worship and praise. And um, in that, then he just might move, you know? <laughs> and um, and we're Westerners, and it's, um, it's, it's end times. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, it's gonna be let's just pray, and then we'll, we'll talk again after that. So, Father, we do uh, lift you up, and we do give you praise, Lord. Only you have the power and the ability to, um, to move mountains and stop storms and all that kind of thing. Uh, but we are glad that we are in the fold. We are part of your kingdom, Lord God, and we um, we just want to lay our and bow our hearts before you now. Uh, let your kingdom come and your will be done. And um, bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.